Welcome back to Cattlemen to Cattlemen. One of the keys to success for cow-calf producers is providing adequate grass and forage for their cattle. But that job gets especially tough when weeds and invasive species such as mesquite are in the picture. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Candace Weida has insight on ways to win the battle against mesquite. For cattle operations here and in much of the Southwest, one of the biggest barriers to improved grazing and wildlife habitat is mesquite. We came to Texas to gain some insights from industry experts and producers who are experienced in battling mesquite. Mesquite uh, robs moisture that uh, we can sure use on our, on our rangelands. Mesquite is a very prolific plant down in the southwest. Um, Texas, it, it, it really is a big problem for us, probably our biggest noxious plant problem. Mesquite is a uh, real concern to us because it's, uh, it's an invasive species, it's very prolific. Canopy cover causes us problems. It, it uh, shades out our natural grasses and thus reducing our forage growth less grazing ability. The problem is is that it comes in and basically makes a monoculture. Shades out a lot of our native grasses. Um, not only causes a monoculture from a brush standpoint, but also from a, a forage diversity standpoint. Only certain types of plants can actually grow under a mesquite canopy. And so you can actually change a pasture quite dramatically just in the diversity of the forage plants with a mesquite uh, canopy coverage. Why is mesquite so difficult to control? Mesquite is very hard to control mainly because it's such a prolific re-sprouter from the crown of that plant, the base of that plant. We can actually go in and top kill mesquite by cutting it off, mowing it, shredding it, um, fire or anything else and not kill that plant. Uh, it will re-sprout from the base so that the, the target when we're talking about killing mesquite is actually killing what's below ground and not what's above ground. With mesquite, we, it was uh, management program was developed over, out of necessity. Uh, it was, we were losing so many, so many acreage to mesquite. Uh, our hand was forced. Uh, we had to come up with something. Uh, Sendero was our best avenue. Tell us about your experience with Sendero here on the operation. Our experience with Sendero uh, has been very good. Uh, we've, we've been very happy with the results we've, we've received uh, using Sendero on our mesquite. We've been able to reduce our, our uh, mesquite population, our canopy cover significantly. Sendero in conjunction with other management tools have really helped us. We, you know, incorporate that diversity and increase the diversity across the ranch. We started a mesquite research project back in about 2007 and over about a seven year period we came up with Sendero herbicide and our goal with that project was to not only improve the mortality of, of mesquite control that we get from, from a herbicide but also the consistency of that. What are some of the different ways that Sendero can be applied? Sendero can be applied in, in a multitude of ways. Um, mainly, we, we put it out with an airplane as an aerial application uh, in a low volume type situation. We'll do what we call individual plant treatment, uh, backpack type sprayers or uh, UTV or ATV type sprayers where we spray individual plants. Uh, we can spray the foliage uh, with Sendero and, and, and do a very good job with a little wider window of application. Why is timing so critical in the application of Sendero? With mesquite control, probably the number one thing that we really need to look at is proper timing. Um, and there's several factors that we want to look at. Um, we want to look at the time of year that we actually start spraying. Uh, and essentially what we want to see is, is we kind of start counting back after bud break. And we want uh, full leaf development and we want dark green leaves. Once we get those dark green leaves, then that we know that at that point it's a fully developed leaf and we're actually moving carbohydrates down into that root system. We talked about wanting to kill that root system. So we have to, we have, to have the carbohydrates moving down in that plant and going to the root system. So the timing to do that is very critical. What are the advantages of having selectivity in mesquite management? 
Through the research project for Sendero, uh, one of the things that we began to notice is, is how selective it was to, to mesquite. And we started noticing how it was leaving some of the more desirable species unharmed, such as our oaks, such as our bromelias, such as our lope bushes and things like that that are important wildlife species. The selectivity of Sendero herbicide is really an important part of it today mainly because of the fact that landowners are beginning to utilize their land more from a wildlife standpoint uh, compared to, to cattle. Now there's still obviously lots of cattle producers out there, but, but a lot of those cattle producers also have a benefit from their wildlife populations in terms of economic income and things like that. Using Sendero, the selectivity of it actually gives us the benefit of leaving some of our desirable species. Those desirable species are important for wildlife habitat. Being able to decrease the mesquite and increase the diversity of, of the desirable browse and forbs has uh, given us the ability to increase the, uh, the quality and quantity of our deer herd. Uh, our bobwhite quail population has been gaining ground, uh, whereas most place, other places there's an opposite trend from that. The unchecked invasion of mesquite can cut forage production by 60 to 70 percent. Dr. Jim Ansley with Texas A&M has been researching new ways to win the battle against mesquite. People have traditionally done brush sculpting with mechanical treatments where you take a bulldozer out there and or some other big piece of heavy equipment and clear lanes uh, either uprooting plants or knocking them over and that obviously is very exact. You can do that exactly where you want to, but the problem with that is typically, unless you're pulling the plant out by the root system, you typically get the re-sprouting that occurs. And so all of that investment, maybe sometimes $300, $400 an acre, all of that investment goes by the wayside uh, in five, 10 years because of the re-sprouting. And, and then you're looking at a, at a re-sprouting forest of mesquite that's even worse than you had it before. Sendero can do that for a much cheaper cost and the other nice thing about it is that you've root killed most of those mesquite in there and so they're not going to re-sprout and so the, the longevity of keeping that area open is much, much longer, you know, 30, 40 years. How does Sendero bring value to cattle producers who are looking to control mesquite for grazing purposes as well as for wildlife? So it's, it's really more of a, of a, of a difference in in what you want to do in, in different spaces on that landscape. Uh, Sendero is, as a product, it's very good about not drifting. And so it, it, you can be very exacting as to where you want to uh, spray Sendero. So if you want to have a 30 acre area of, of open land that is currently infested by mesquite, but you would like to convert that more to an open grassland, uh, or maybe a grassland that has some of the better shrubs in it for forage value, uh, Sendero can be used for that, but you may want an area right next to that that you still want to keep as, as a dense patch of mesquite or some other brush species for wildlife habitat. So the nice thing about a product like Sendero is that it allows you to do that. You can, you can, you can do that brush sculpting in a very exact manner. So if a producer is looking to restore their pasture for the purpose of grazing as well as wildlife, where should they start? The first place to start would be to really try to get a good inventory of how that brush is distributed on, on that area. You usually have quite a bit of variation in that brush density. And what I would recommend is that typically in the areas that have the most dense mesquite, that's where you're gonna have the least grass production and probably the most, the most deterioration of your grass community in my opinion, that's not the best place to start. I would work on, I mean, if, you, if resources are limited and you realize that you can't spray the entire pasture, you don't have the resources to spray the entire pasture, and you may want to have a little bit of wildlife habitat in addition, if that's one of your goals. I would work on the areas that are maybe a little bit less dense, that still have a pretty good grass community, that you can get a, be a better bang for your buck, uh, when you spray that immediately because that grass community will respond faster. There's no doubt left untreated, mesquite will take over a pasture 
and leave little or no grazing for cattle or habitat for wildlife. That's why new tools in the effort to manage and control mesquite are so eagerly welcomed by producers. In Texas, I'm Candace Wieda reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information on mesquite control and Sendero herbicide, call toll-free 888-346-6910. By calling, you can sign up to receive this informational brochure on Sendero herbicide and more. Again, just call us at 888-346-6910.